Is EcoFlow's high efficiency 100 watt panel better than Harbor Freight? We'll test each one individually to see which one comes out the best using load testers and more. The EcoFlow solar panels are brand new out of the box and are packaged extremely well, but they do come in a two pack versus a Harbor Freight panel I just used it last week in another test. EcoFlow's new solar panel now utilizes half cut cells. This is more common in today's solar panels and each cell has 10 bus bars which helps with constant voltage and also prevent hot spotting in shady conditions just like this large residential or commercial solar panel that is 400 watts using half cut cells and also utilizing 9 bus bars. The Harbor Freight solar panel has been unchanged for a couple years using much smaller cells. These are quarter cut cells and only utilize 5 bus bars per each cell. And with such small cells, the Harbor Freight solar panel consists of 64 total cells per panel versus 30 total cells for the EcoFlow solar panel. The EcoFlow solar panel will come in at a price of $249, but that's for two solar panels. And as we look at the specs, it comes in at 20.3 volts for open circuit, and its short circuit current will be 6.3 amps with a square area of about 855 inches or 5.9 feet, versus a Harbor Freight will come in at $89 to $129, depending if you use a super coupon. And it doesn't show much except for the specs being 18 volts, 5.56 amps, and a square area of about 914 inches or 6.35 feet. We'll take a look inside each one of the junction boxes and inside EcoFlow they use a potting material. This is actually better for waterproofing but you can't see the type of wire or connections but they do use an MC4 type connector and they also use a 2.5 millimeter cable or 14 gauge. On the back of the Harbor Freight panel, they use a more common junction box on some of these smaller solar panels. This also utilizes an O-ring to help seal it, and they use solder for their connections versus a crimp, and the amount of solder that they use in between the diodes isn't bad, but sometimes it looks like it might be too much, and as we scrape away a little bit of the insulation, you can see they use a tin copper wire, which is common in almost all solar panels. Harbor Freight also uses a SAE connector and what looks like to be 14 gauge wire as well. I ended up marking both of these solar panels that way for future testing down the road we can see when they were put in the service just like the Harbor Freight one that I used a week ago. Okay I put these panels out here almost 30 minutes ago so they've been out here heat soaking. This will give us a more realistic output number versus when they're nice and cold and I have them at the exact same angle. And if we look at the temperature here on the heat gun, both of these are running right about 124 degrees. So this should make the test pretty equal. And also when doing STC testing, that's around like 77 degrees and at least a thousand watts meter square, but that's not very realistic. Realistic is really hot temperatures and also the conditions I'm dealing with today, which is a hazy sky, but they're both playing under the exact same field. So we'll see how they perform. Okay, I'm curious to see how EcoFlow does here. Open circuit voltage test and 18.64 volts. Okay, now we'll move to Harbor Freight. And let's see how it does. Oh, look at that, 19.31 volts. So we'll see how it does in the next test. Okay, since the Harbor Freight comes with a SAE connector, I'm gonna add this adapter with MC4 and we'll test it again real quick with the adapter and the voltage is actually a pinch higher, which normally should be lower. Okay, next test is the EcoFlow solar panel, and it's going to be powering up this EcoFlow power station. So we'll take a look and see what our input wattage is. And you can see about 84 watts coming in, and we'll want to remember this number for later. Okay, same test with the Harbor Freight solar panel. That's the EcoFlow cables. Take a look at the power station and run and ride about 90 watts. Look at that. So we'll want to remember these numbers for later. Okay, so now we're gonna load both of these panels. I have these load testers here. And so what these are gonna show us is just a little bit more information. And this is gonna be the EcoFlow solar panel. And I have this to start at 70 watts. You can see the voltage at 18.5. Over here, this is also at 70 watts and 19.2 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and start these at about the same time just for fun. And then we're going to turn up the load and see if we can match or beat what the EcoFlow was here in a minute. So we'll take a look again. 16.5 volts and about 14.2 amps and giving us about 70 watts. We'll look at the Harbor Freight one. 17.3 volts, so higher voltage and a little bit lower amperage. And sorry, sometimes it's hard to get underneath here where the panels are because they're kind of tucked under for the glare. 
but pretty much 70 watts there. So we're gonna turn these up a little bit. So this is now 75 watts. This is on the Harbor Freight solar panel and 17.1 volts, 4.3 amps, so that went up. Now over here, same thing. If you notice our amperage is higher, but our voltage is quite a bit lower by almost a full volt. So let's see, 75 watts power there. We're gonna go ahead and turn these up a little bit more. Okay, now both of these are running right about 80 watts. And remember what the numbers were before on the EcoFlow power station. So this is the Harbor Freight, 16.8 volts, and our amperage is now higher at 4.7. Then we go over here to the EcoFlow at 15 volts, 15.7 and 5.0 amps, meant 80 watts. So remember the EcoFlow was able to get up to about 84 on that EcoFlow power station and we got about 90 or so on the Harbor Freight. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these up a little more. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and bump this up a little, 81, go one more to 82. And again, sorry, hard to get under here with the panel and the camera and trying to keep the glare down. And we go here, go up a little bit. This is the EcoFlow panel, 81 watts, 82 watts. And so far, so good. Remember, we were able to get up to 84 on the power station, so we'll see if we can go higher. And it has already gotten hotter since I was doing the power station. And now we're going 84. Notice our amperage, 5.0. Oh, and this is rated at 5.56 amps. As we go here to 84, and oh, there's shutdown. So notice the voltage dropped, and so did our wattage. Our wattage now just says seven watts, but it's not really doing anything. This this is basically now what you would think is a dead panel, but um, the load tester basically shut off because it wasn't able to draw any more from it, at least under that load. So now we'll see how far the Harbor Freight goes. So we boost this up to see if we can get past 90, or maybe it shuts down even sooner. But there we are at 5.2 amps, and again, that one's dead. This one's still running. So we'll keep boosting this up. That's 87, 88, and there's 89. And that's about the rated amperage right there at 89. Now we're trying to pull more amps and there it goes at 90, it's done. So, so again, the Hubber Freight panel performs really well and also really consistent. It's a great panel for the buy. Not that the EcoFlow isn't. Um, you do have to buy them in a two-pack, so that is kind of one thing. But is there another panel out there, a 100-watt panel, that can beat the Harbor Freight panel? I'm very curious. Let me know down in the comments which one it would be, and I hope you liked the video.